this is Gary with Cubase Academy with a quick video about markers. Markers let you quickly uh, locate points in your project, but they also come in really handy if you have a bunch of exporting to do. In my project, I have some um, voiceover work, two slides, and this is going to help me organize my slides and be able to jump around quickly. So to get to the marker window, you use project markers, which you can see here is control M and control M will toggle these on and off. I have a couple of markers already set in my marker window that I can use to jump to those points in the project. They're pretty arbitrary right now. I don't really need them either. So uh, I'm actually going to select both of them using click, shift click, and I'm going to delete the current uh, markers by choosing remove marker. Okay. So I'm going to close this window. We have no markers in the project. Uh, and I'm going to show you another way to look at markers, which I think is a little more useful. We can actually add a marker track. And I'm going to call it um, version 1 uh, here, version 1 markers. We're going to move it up here. And uh, the marker track has a few options. You can add a marker, add a cycle marker, locate a marker, turn on a set of cycle markers, and zoom. So let's see what those do. Uh, I'm going to uh, pick a point arbitrarily on the screen, and I'm going to add a marker. You can see it puts it in right here. Okay. Then I'm going to go up to the top left corner under description, and I'm going to type in start of project. Okay, so there. That's a marker. And uh, maybe I'll do one um, here, and I'll put one at the beginning of this, and I'm just going to try to figure out where that is. Manually, don't have snap on here, and I'm going to insert another marker, click once, and we're going to call this um, uh, slide to narration. There you go. So I've got two markers that I can now go to locate and jump to those markers. I can also bring up the marker window, and you'll see that I have those markers, and clicking to the left here jumps to those locations. Functionality uh, available in the window is slightly different than the functionality available in the track. So they complement each other. You'll, you'll find yourself using both. So that's a location marker. Let's talk about cycle markers. I'm going to start a new point in the project, and I'm going to just record a new slide just very quickly here. You are now looking at slide number three. There you go. I'm going to uh, quickly edit the start event start. I can trim this up a little bit. An event end here, and you can see that it trims it up <clears throat> in my window there. And I'm using Alt F3 to quickly open and close this bottom panel, by the way. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this uh, slide number 3, and I'm going to hit press P, and P turns on my left and right locators. Um, and the reason it's purple is because loop is turned on. It may be gray if loop is turned off. It doesn't matter, actually. But now I'm going to come up to my uh, marker track, and I'm going to insert a cycle marker. And you can see that it stretches left to right here. I'm going to name it slide 3. OK. And I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to name this one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to press P, and I'm going to add a cycle marker, and I'm going to call it slide 2. Great. And I think for this one, I'll still select it and choose P, but I'm going to bring up the window with Control M. And I'm going to say Functions Insert Cycle Marker. And it does, and now it allows me to type in Slide 1. Okay, excellent. So you'll see now in this window I've got two types of markers. Position markers and cycle markers. Okay, and you can tell the cycle marker because it has a bracket around the number. So let's filter this window to only show cycle markers. Great. 
The problem that you've probably noticed is that these markers are in the opposite order. They don't line up. So uh, marker one is slide three, and marker two is slide two, so that one works, but marker three is slide one. A little bit confusing. Now, uh, because it's sorted by position in the, in, the, uh, in the program window, I could sort it by ID, but now my uh, tracks are out of alignment, right? It's jumping backwards when I go down here. So there's a, ni there's a nice little function we can use here. Function reassign cycle marker IDs. One, two, three. Oh, I've got them. Actually, I've got them. There you go. <laughs> I had it sorted by cycle marker. So now it's sorted by position. One, two, and three are back in order. So that's pretty convenient. Now, um, you can add more than one cycle marker track. Okay. So if I had uh, some revisions to make, I'm going to copy this track. I'm going to duplicate it. Edit. I'm going to go to macros and duplicate without data. So this is my second um, version, my second set of takes. We'll mute our first track. And we'll add another. Well, let's change the color so we don't get confused. We'll make this one orange. Let's add another marker track. Okay, so add track, marker. We we'll call this version two. Okay, move it above again, and uh, let's give it the same color. Okay, so now if I need to do a revision for a customer, it doesn't really matter what slide it is. I'll just pick an arbitrary point, and uh, I will record some audio for this. This is a revised slide number two. Okay, so again, I will bring up Alt F3, bring up my editor window, move my start and end points. Of course, I could put fades in and anything else I need to do, but this is just a quick demo. All right, I'm going to hit P. Okay. And I'm going to uh, assign a cycle marker. Right? And this is going to be, I could call it V2 slide 2, just to be clear. Okay. Uh, there it is, V2 slide 2. Okay. Um, that's pretty clear. Now uh, I can um, I can actually use uh, uh, either cycle marker. So if I go back to this one here, I want to actually I should have shown you something. As well as locating, we can jump to the beginning of any cycle marker. You could also s just hit the cycle button and actually turn on the move the locators to the beginning and end of each of those cycle marker points which is very convenient, right? So if I didn't have anything selected here, if I just move this all the way back there, and any cycle marker I choose, so three, boom. Now I can turn on my looping or off, and this area is selected. But notice now I have a check mark because this is the active cycle marker track. If I come down here, I have to turn this track on and now I can cycle this track instead. Okay, so only one cycle track can be on at a time. So one more t one more place this is useful, and this is fairly new. I think as of eight, it used to be if you did a voiceover job like this, you'd have to either put each one of those these on its own track, and then you'd export them, and then or you'd have one long file to export and chop it up into the individual pieces. If you were going to put this, say it was narration for a PowerPoint then you'd have to embed each one of these WAV files in the PowerPoint. So you'd have to export them individually, not as one long track. But now, if we go to File, Export, Audio Mixdown, we actually have uh, an option here down under Export Cycle Markers to choose the cycle markers to export. So I'm going to click one, two, three here. and I don't really need to give anything else, a location to save it, a type of file. I can use a naming scheme, and I'm actually using the cycle marker ID and the cycle marker name. So in this case, an example would be 3-slide3. So it's cycle marker 3, slide 3 is the title. That's fine for me right now. This is going to cut my audio off for a second, but you can watch as the three files get exported.
Okay, I did this as a test already, so those files already existed. So those three individual files have now been exported from their cycle marker start and end points. Now, if I activate this cycle marker track and I go back to that window, only one cycle marker is available because I've only done one on that particular track. So now I can export this one. There. So I've used cycle markers to isolate areas of my project for exporting and can automate the export process, which used to be very manual, very tedious, and now is very fast. I hope this video was useful to you. Uh, I know I use markers all the time in my projects and it's a great workflow uh, enhancer. So uh, if you like the video, please uh, give it a like and please subscribe to the channel. I always appreciate the views and the comments and I will see you next time.